Yo, yo, what up, what's happening? What's going on, world? It's the Wrap Up Podcast. We back, episode eight. Episode eight, man. How you feeling, dog? I'm feeling good, man. Can't complain, man. Holding on, maintaining. Absolutely, that's all we can do. One so- love, baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> So, man, you know, it's that time, our favorite time of year. The NBA is back. It's back. Uh, We already knee-deep in preseason. We got about six days, seven days? Seven. Seven days left until the actual season jumps off. So, it's only right, it's only fitting that we have episode eight. Kobe, jump us us into the NBA episode, What Mark Scott say, can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait, man. Hey, man, and... uh, might as well jump into it. The headlines are being dominated right now by one Mr. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Buckets. Jimmy went in his first day of practice of being back with the team and started a fire. It's all over social media. It's all over the NBA headlines. Uh, if you don't know, if you ain't aware, Jimmy Butler has been missing from uh, training camp from uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves. So today is his first day back. He's already, during the offseason, asked for a trade. He no longer wants to be on the team. He even met with uh, the the brass or the owners and personnel people, what have you. He's met with them and said, hey, here's a list of teams that I want to be traded to. So he wasn't reporting to training camp, wasn't reporting to practices, none of that jazz. But now, today was his first day back, and he came out firing. So, um, if anybody knows, or if, if you hip to the NBA, Adrian Wojnarowski broke the story that he went to practice, and he dominated practice, uh-huh. so to speak. They said that he took the third-string team <laughs> against the starters and, 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 and thrashed them. Said that he got busy on everybody. Said he... He personally called out Thibs, uh, Coach Thibodeau. He personally called out Cat. He personally called out Andrew Wiggins. Yep. Um, I will say this, uh, taking a look at some other stuff, some reports, that they also said that, uh, you know, he gave them dudes some props too. Um, but well, I, I guess the, the main thing, the funniest thing that I saw out of all of this is that the ball went down to Anthony Towns in the paint. And Jimmy Butler is guarding him. If y'all know who Carl Anthony Towns and Jimmy Butler is, Carl Anthony Towns got about two, three inches on him uh, in height. More than that. Carl Anthony Towns a legit, what, 6'11"? 6'11"? 6'10"? Okay, so yeah, so maybe maybe four or five, four or five inches. And Jimmy what? 6'7"? 6'6"? They say, we'll say 6'6", 6'7". Okay. 6'6", 6'7". So regardless, he got some height on him. He definitely got some weight on him. Jimmy says... You ain't got nothing for me in the post. Basically called the man out and said, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't ish down here in the post. Other sign of disrespect, boy. Disrespectful. And they say that Cat passed the ball back out of the paint. That's a red flag for me. It is. For a guy who you just paid. Carl Anthony Towns just got paid. Yeah, 154. And if he's, yeah, and he's that's, supposed that's to be the face of, of your franchise. And he backing down in practice. Yeah. All I'm saying is your upper echelon stars right now. None of them is taking that lightly. <laughs> None of them. You can't. You can't, man. Not, e- not even. Uh, I'll say it's, it's just your most competitive guys in the NBA not taking that. Melo, yeah. Melo you're not even going to say is an upper echelon star right now. He's kind of on the decline. But Melo ain't going. No. You get that ball down in the post to that like that with Melo, and he going he gonna to try and get busy on you. Um, so, I mean, to me, that's a red flag for Carl Anthony Towns. But what do you make of the whole ordeal with Jimmy? Not even just what he did today at practice, but the whole Jimmy saga that's going on in the offseason. How do you feel about that? It's, it's, it's not surprising because being in Chicago, we all kind of saw when uh, Jimmy hit that Hollywood wall, if you will. And, I see it. And I say that when he started kicking it and hanging with the Wahlbergs and you know <laughs> when that became bestie then he, my, my man went team Jordan and, you when, know, once he got the Jordan brand yeah, contract it was and then, over. you know 95 mil didn't do anything but you know compound everything and I agree with that to a certain extent mm-hmm. you got to remember Jimmy bet on himself yeah he did he they did. were going to they offered Jimmy a contract extension mm-hmm. on the last year of his rookie contract. Yep. He they said offered, no. Um, four and forty-eight. Yeah, and he said no. 
Mm-hmm. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit free agency. I'm going to bank on this. And yep. Jimmy balled out. Jimmy balled out. Uh, he was an all-star that, uh, yeah. that year, right? And, and one thing about Jimmy you can you can never say is that he doesn't play hard. Jimmy's now, he may do very, some stuff off the court that's like, yo, what my man's doing. But on the yeah. court, he doesn't do it as much defensively anymore because as you get older, you kind of learn how to pick your spots defensively. Mm-hmm. But he's still a shutdown defender to me. I, I, I definitely say that. Jimmy is a top five. I can't name five defenders better at than Jimmy right now. Yeah. And when I'm talking about defense, I'm talking about people who can guard on the perimeter, mm-hmm. not just play the passing lane. You can guard multiple positions and you can you can make it tough for a premier offensive scorer. And that's Jimmy Butler to me. The fact that he's coming to his own with his offensive game has just made him he's he's a legit star in the league. I wouldn't say that he's elite, mm-hmm. but Jimmy is Jimmy is a top twenty player in the NBA. I say top fifteen. Top, I, 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 I'm. That would be arguable. He has I'm with you on that. several other cats, and maybe two cats in front of him that's stopping him from being a starter on the All Star team each year. I agree. And one one thing that really and that's sets Harden him, yeah. and DeRozan when he was with the Bulls. Yeah, that's one of the main things that it stops is the fact. I mean that uh, that you re, you have to toss Jimmy's hat into the ring is because he plays both sides of the ball yep. at a premium level. It's not a lot of guys who play great offense and defense throughout the game. You could you could put Jimmy out there for 48 minutes and he going to lay it all on the line. He's played 48 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean Several that's times. that's that's the it's, especially playing in the Bulls system. That's that was mandatory when you was with Thibs. But um that's 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 my high side of Jimmy. My low side of Jimmy is we are starting to see this I don't want to say cancerous. That might be a little harsh. Can breaker. <laughs> Maybe cantankerous. Um, he's starting to isolate himself or cause these front office issues in now the second team that he's at. Mm-hmm. We heard it when he was here in Chicago. Now we're seeing it again uh, in Minnesota. And Jimmy's thing is, first of all, Jimmy, he holds the rest of his team to a high level of accountability. Mm-hmm. If Jimmy out there playing hard for these 48 minutes, he expects the rest of these people to play hard 48 minutes too. I agree. I agree. So. From what I keep hearing from Jimmy is that he's not getting that everywhere he goes. Mm-hmm. And my thing is you have to understand that everybody doesn't have that same competitive drive mm-hmm. as you. And, 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 you know, it worked when he was in Chicago because mm-hmm. that during what I would say, what, 2008 until his last year. Mm-hmm. That kind of, I don't even know if he got drafted in 2008, but somewhere around that time. Mm-hmm. That was kind of our calling card to our success. Yeah. We played hard. Yeah. We played We great left it defense. all on the line. So it fit him, Joe King, Noah, um, Lou Al Ding. All the pieces fit the same narrative. No one had yeah. a different mode because this is how we made it to the NBA. This is how we are going to stay in yeah. the NBA. But yeah. now you go to a team as the man. And you have young stars in Wiggins and in Cat that they didn't have to do that. They came in the league losing. They stayed in the league losing. Mm-hmm. They got their money. So that drive, that initiative isn't the same as someone coming from, you know, poor boy County, Texas, which he came from. True. So it's a I different could, mindset. I could see that, but that shouldn't, that shouldn't, where you come from shouldn't stop your competitive drive. True. Because let's look at Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving grew up pretty well off. And he's still one of the best. He's still one of the toughest competitors in the in the NBA. Now, I will say this. A lot of um, guys in the league have, you know, they, they, they come from a, a lesser, you know, background. They may not have it all. And, yeah, that strive, that, that, uh, that strife, rather, drives you to want to be better because you know where you came from. But... When it comes down to it, you got to find a way to balance that with not isolating yourself from your teammates. Teammate Jimmy has a high caliber of play, and he has a high drive and a high competitiveness. But on the flip side of that, Jimmy doesn't seem to be that great of a teammate. At, I least, can agree. at, le- at least from I, I what agree. we continue to see is that he he isolates himself if everybody isn't of the same mind frame of Jimmy. And I understand your competitive drive, it, at the end of the day, Jimmy wants to win a ring. He wants to be looked at as somebody who uh, can get his team over the hump, get them to the promised land, get them some jewelry at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. I get that. I dig that. But you have, a, you have to try to find a way to do that 
without isolating yourself or bringing down the team morale. Chemistry is a huge part of basketball. But you got to think about it. Jimmy's never been a leader until he got to the NBA. True. His, his yeah, and years in Marquette, he wasn't the leader. Was, yeah. I would say um, Crowder was the leader before him. Okay. And then when he get to the Bulls, he has Lou Alding, he has Joe Kim Noah. Rose. Then you get a Rose. He became a de facto leader when Rose got hurt, and he became the player that he is now. Mm -hmm. So he was kind of thrust into a leadership role when he was, I wouldn't say he was content being a backup player, but that's what he was familiar with. But once he realized that I'm the man, that's mm -hmm. where the Hollywood Jimmy part come on. Do you do all the things that you think being a man encompasses, that it all details? Then going to Minnesota, he has a young, he went to Minnesota as the man. True. He's, he's the man in Minnesota. He went there. This trade was contingent on Jimmy, of course, going back with Tibbs and a young yeah. foundation. Yeah. But you also got to be careful what you wish for because he wanted out of Chicago. He did. He didn't like the way we were running things. Then he go with some young bulls that really are becoming old calves. So it's in reverse. They're not bulls. They really still calves. I think, I think it's, it's, it's uh, I see where you're going with that. And I think it's really more so. If that if that's how you feel, then find a way to cultivate the talent. I mean, because here's here's one thing is that you can't knock LeBron James on. Is that everybody always says not everybody, but a majority of the people who he plays with always says that he is a good mentor. He's a great teammate, and it's evident. You ain't even got to talk about what people what people's personal feelings are. The statistics show he makes his team better. See, I don't agree with that because LeBron didn't go into teams. Okay, let's just say Jimmy going to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Jimmy went to Minnesota with two bona fide stars. Mm -hmm. LeBron went to teams where other stars later in his career. But when LeBron sure. came into the league, he wasn't playing with – he didn't go to the Cavs. Or go to Miami with a team that had bona fide stars. I mean, we were already friends, so I don't really count that as really working. But he went, Jimmy has gone to a team that had aspirations, some would say, of going to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, the, if you look at their talent on paper, they, they should contend for a title. But then you see the work ethic. True. And I'm pretty sure Jimmy tried to impart work ethic. Even if it's lead by example, Jimmy works hard. True. They have then, a work hard coach. But how are you doing that? How are you doing that? Because everybody doesn't, everybody isn't receptive to an iron fist all of the time. You're right. You got to, you got to, you have to tailor your teachings, tailor your, your uh, mentorship, if you will, to the person who you're getting it from, you know? And, and I will say this is that when you're the star, when you're the man, then you can they kind of give you leeway to be able to do what you do because i'm gonna be honest watching mike for years mike didn't really tailor the way that he gave it to you you had to you had to come up to where mike was at and i think that's what jimmy is trying to do but then i look at it on the flip side as to where um kobe and lebron james they kind of tailored the way that they did they still have that high competitive drive mm -hmm. And they still had people come up to where they were, but I felt like they had they found a different way to tailor their approach. I don't think Kobe tailored anything. Old Kobe? Maybe not young Kobe. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, not, old Kobe. Maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. not, maybe Kobe, not yeah. like 08, 09, 2010 mm -hmm. Kobe, but, but old Kobe? But old Kobe is the Kobe everybody loves now. Everybody loves old yeah, Kobe. Yeah. You know, Kobe had a metamorphosis in character. Sure. The latter part of his I, career. And, it, and we've all benefited from it. It was great. I agree. I Jimmy, agree. I mean, LeBron, on the other hand, he seems like LeBron yeah. wants to be liked. He wants, yeah. That, that's I was trying to find a softer way to say it, yeah. but yeah, that's it. Yeah. LeBron wants to be liked, so he goes out of his way to be extra friendly, extra. You know, now he's doing the things with Josh Hart and uh, yeah. Josh Hart or John Hart. Josh Hart. Josh yeah. Hart yeah. and uh, Kuzma. Excuse me. He's doing the same things with them now, going on Twitter and doing all that stuff. I think and it every, works. And every time I see him, he seems to be having fun. He's, you know doing his thing but Jimmy is more of that I'm going to say more of that 
I didn't always have this, and this can lead for me. Why aren't you playing the same way? Whereas if you look at Wiggins, Wiggins was a star in Canada at like 12. Yeah. Cat was a star at like 12. Yeah. <laughs> you go to Kentucky. You in know Kansas, what I mean? You go to Kansas. Yeah. You drafted number one. Were both number one? Was Cat number Wiggins. one? Cat, Wiggins was number one. Yeah. And Cat, Cat was too. Well, I believe so. Both of them was number one Number picks. one picks. Yeah. Jimmy was number 20. 20. 20 or 27. Somewhere 27, in, I think. Somewhere in between there. Yeah. You know, he didn't go to, he went to a, a, a rich basketball program school, but they weren't really doing anything at the time, yeah. you know, he was there. So you got these young kids that's pretty much been the cream of the crop their whole lives. Then mm-hmm. they go into the league and they're the cream of the crop. They're losing, not saying that they're comfortable with losing, but they're losing and that's kind of the mentality and you have to come in to try to change that. The only Why? way you know how to change it is through hard work and you know what what Floyd say? Um that hard work, dedication, dedication, hard work. You know what Floyd say. Yeah. Hard work, dedication that thing. Yeah. So that's all Jimmy knows. Where sometimes like you mentioned with Kobe, you gotta finesse. I believe Mike did a little bit finesse and we don't know about it, but he still had the iron that. the iron hand, the iron fist with it at the same time. I, as a competitive I'm extremely competitive myself. Yeah. I don't think you should ever get comfortable with losing. So if that's Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins um, crutch, or if that's their reasoning, then that's that's terrible. Because you you can't you can't don't ever get comfortable with losing. Because on the flip side, it's a I'm not gonna say a bunch, but I can definitely name some other players who came from, you know, like great collegiate backgrounds or great high school backgrounds and then they got into the league and they started losing, but they weren't comfortable with losing. But you got also the first- Check too, sorry to cut you off. Do they see Jimmy as that stud? As on that level to be a leader of this team. So that they, might be the They issue. may not see Jimmy in the same elite class. Cat may feel because Cat's a top 15 player too. So does Cat feel he's, yeah, he, he's 12 and Jimmy's 15? It could be. <laughs> but then if that's the case, if, if y'all are 12, it, let, let's, let's say that that's the dynamic. You 12 and 15. Then why can't you do that and incorporate Andrew Wiggins and incorporate a, a, a proven coach and and make something happen? Why is it so much dysfunction? And then on the flip, uh, on t- just to compound to that, the dysfunction came when Jimmy came, True. and he came from dysfunction. So can we say that this is Cat and Andrew Wiggins? Now I will say this to me, me personally, and it hurts to say this because I'm a huge Kansas fan. Andrew Wiggins, in my opinion, has plateaued. Oh, absolutely. I always liked his I game. I agree. I always thought that he had much more to offer, and I think he's comfortable with where he's at, and that hurts. I, I agree. think I think Cat. Holy. I think Cat still has some growing to do. I think the jury is still out. The talent is undeniable, and as I bring that up, that's actually what Jimmy said. Jimmy said that the most talented player. On that team is Carl Anthony Towns. Mm-hmm. He says that Andrew Wiggins has the most God-given talent. Mm-hmm. He said, but the high, hardest worker, he said, he said it's easily me. Mm-hmm. He said, by far, it, that's me. And you can't fault any of that. You can't. Because that's visible. You can't. It, it, it's truly visible. It was visible in the playoffs. Yeah. And I think that, that this, where, that's where this all really manifested from is from the playoffs. So I think the hard work and the the... Um, the the grind it out type ethics and that hard nosed defense and coming attack in the day I think that part of Jimmy Butler is what makes him great but then it's also got to be something else that continues to make his teammates think like oh man this nigga just walked into practice and he just completely brings the morale and the chemistry down mm-hmm. that's the issue well, you we need to get to that some people have hard work repellent and they just don't <laughs> <laughs> and they just don't want to work hard. Okay. When I play ball, practice to me was always fun. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say why. Practice was fun to me because, one, you get to work on things that you need for the game, of course. Mm-hmm. But it's the way you get – it's how you get better. True. But I wasn't making 95 mil, so being a job doing it every day, that can get tiring. I understand that. Yeah, but I and once again not counting anyone's money or questioning anyone's you know wherewithal in terms of the game. I just can't see how 
you can be content, and I'm not even saying they are, but it seems like they are content with just being in the league and waiting for February to go to the All Star game for Cat. Cat, if he wants to, he can be. I don't want to say because I think AD is elite. He's yeah. elite. His 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 he's he's elite. If 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 AD is Hakeem Olajuwon, Cat can easily be David Robinson. I am. I'm on the same path as that. I don't know. I don't think that he'll be better than AD. Mm-hmm. But he has all of the tools too. All the tools. I mean, if you think about it, he he has a good back to the basket game. Mm-hmm. One of the very first things that I noticed about him, even playing in Kentucky, and it still continues now, is he probably has the best big man footwork. Probably he's definitely top three. He he got some of the best footwork in the league. AD Cat Boogie. I wasn't even I, Boogie is right there, but I'm actually gonna go with um. NBA. No, um, my man's in Denver. No, um, Nokic. Nokic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm going yeah. with him. Um, him, Cat, AD. Nokic. Not in that order, but those those is my top three. Nokic the quietly may be taking Cat's spot as that. It could second be. best big man. It could be. It, that, let me, but he's he, there. The, he has the it, just like Cat. He has all of the tools. Mm-hmm. He got he can shoot that outside shot. I think a uh, Cat is actually a better shooter. Yeah, Cat is a better shooter than AD. Um, but I think where he really needs to grow is his. I think he wants to. He needs to want it more, and that might be evident from what we hear or this rumor that we've heard about practice. Is no way you got a guy. You got a small forward or shooting guard, whatever you want to classify Jimmy as. You got a wing on you in the paint, and you one of the league's premier big men. You Barbecue get it down to the paint, and Should this man Barbecue says, checker. "And this man says you can't do nothing with me down here." And you toss the ball back out. The only reason you better be tossing it back out is just to reposition or repost up, and nah. you better say, "Give me that ball back." Shaq did it all the time. He moved Shaq- the other block and set picks. Cat. <laughs> The all, all, and and I, I believe you. I, I don't think I don't think that cat wanted that anyway. Uh, either, but it, it, the only way I'm tossing that ball out is if I'm cat. If I'm Carl Anthony Towns, is just to say, hey, I want to reposition and give me that ball right back. I'm yeah. finna go to work down here. And if you're the face of the franchise, and you shouldn't even need to reposition on someone that's five six inches. Let like, like, he's an elite defender. We already said that he's an elite defender. He's you an elite defender. Hey. You, you you gotta come with it. Face up, then spin back around and get them back into the post. Now you reset again. True, I did that, but uh, you know that you got five people on the court for a reason. You're right. So I mean that that's all I'm saying. But it, pra- this ain't a game at practice. What um, it, Shannon say? I'm busting you up, Skip. <laughs> I'm, I'm busting you up. I'm Skip. busting you up. That's what you need to be doing, man. It should have been. That's 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 the way it should have went, but it didn't. And man, it's 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 a lot of dysfunction that's going on. Do you think? Jimmy lasts in Minnesota to the All-Star game. Do you think he's a Minnesota Timberwolf to the All-Star game? It depends on how much Miami wants to give up to get him. Because I ultimately believe that's where he's going. He's going to Miami because that's where his man's at. Okay. D-Wade. And you heard about what they was trying to give up, right? No. Um, Richardson and a first-round draft pick. Is that enough for Jimmy? Jimmy would end his year in Minnesota if that's all. That they're offering. Supposedly, like, they've reopened negotiations. Like, now. like I told you, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. In order for Jimmy to leave, I believe Winslow has to be in that deal. Mm. Winslow mm. would have to be the piece in that deal. Winslow, Richardson, and a first. I can see that'll that. Get, that'll get it done. Winslow, because now Richardson Winslow, and a first. Winslow kind of gets that defensive um, portion Part of that, what Jimmy that Jimmy did. leaves. And you know they both fifty fifty on offense, given yeah. on how they feeling. So yo, quiet is kept. If that trade does go off, Winslow don't start. No, the way mm-hmm. that it looked so far, I'm gonna say this: the way that it's been looking, I'm starting Derrick Rose. And yeah, maybe yeah, that's a little biased, but mm-hmm. the way that he played at the two, alongside um, yeah. Jeff T, mm-hmm. why I'm not, not? I'm not opposed to that. Why not start him? Why not? Why? Why wouldn't your starting lineup be T Rose? Uh, Wiggins, Taj, Cat. 
that would be that, that would be your best move. So so is Jimmy officially on trade watch or he's oh, there? Oh yeah. Or, or he's there for the year. I think that he doesn't make it past the All Star break. I don't think he makes it past the All Star break. It's too many people who are who are depending who depend, wanna, depending on what Miami is in the seating. If they're in between that, if Jimmy can get them from seven to four, possibly he's gone. He should be. In, they should be in that anyway. Yeah, I I think mm-hmm. with with Goran Dragic with um, a healthy Deion Waiters. Um, well, let's talk ho- about the East. Let's go straight to the East. Okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let's talk, to the East. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go all the way to it. Uh, and we can we can start with Miami. I think mm-hmm. Miami is should even without Jimmy Butler, they should be in the playoff picture. Okay. Um, you got Deion Waiters back for a full season. He's if he's healthy and in shape. I seen a picture of him. He looked like he was a little out of shape. But uh, then I seen Buddy warming up, and he hit like. 17, 18 straight trades. Oh, and I ain't talking that. about I ain't talking about in just like no standstill. I'm talking about like in game tray balls, like mm-hmm. dribble pull up moves and he was going to work. Mm-hmm. So I mean even though he looked like he was a little bit on the heftier side, with or without Jimmy, I think that they should be in the playoffs. And with a invigorated, you know, team mm-hmm. trying to uh, you know, have, give way that one last hurrah, they should be in the playoffs. So this is the first time that the East Kind of got some pretty dope storylines. It's got, a lot. We got Kawhi yeah. in Toronto. Yeah. Um, we still on that hold and hope for Dwight to be the person or the player we think he should have been. I think it's over with for him. But it's interesting to see how he's going to look in Washington. I think he's finally playing with a point guard who is, this is no diss to Kemba. Um, I think he's finally playing with a point guard who has the elite level passing skills to get him the ball where he needs to. Because let's be honest, Dwight Howard, in my opinion, has never been offensively gifted. He's been athletic, but he never really had a post move. He don't have any go-to moves. He's not that great with the footwork on offense. And you know Defense, why, he's immaculate. You know why this is going to work to me? Why oh, I feel it's going to work? In Orlando, when Jameer was running the point, yeah, they weren't running the ball offensively through Dwight Howard. They weren't. It was going through Rashard Lewis. Yeah, he got the ball where he could get it, rebounding. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. When he went to Charlotte, let's not even talk about L.A., but when yeah. he went to <laughs> – let's not talk about Houston. Yeah. When he went to Charlotte, they were trying to run offense through Dwight. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a lot, yeah. but he had his fair share of this ball about to go in the post, and let's see what you can do with it. 10, 15 touches a game. Yeah. Or, uh, 10, 15 plays a game. He, mm-hmm. went, he may not always get the shot on those 10, 15 mm-hmm. plays, but they would run a touch or run a set designed to mm-hmm. try to get him a solid look. And I believe that's, that's that came straight from Mike because the old Bulls teams used to run – early offense through the centers to get them going to see if we're going to keep going to them Mm -hmm. throughout the game. To try to open up the floor. But in Washington, you got Wall, you got Bill, so you don't need to run. Otto Porter, if he's going to have a great year this Mm -hmm. year. Temple still there? Temple? I think so. So you don't have to run anything through Dwight. Dwight can get his buckets off putbacks, oops, dives to the basket. That's the best situation for Dwight. And the, first of all, they're going to run a lot of I, – I see him in a lot of motion, a lot of screen rolls yep. with, with John Wall. But one thing is is with with Charlotte, they could kind of sag into the paint a little bit because yeah. they didn't have great shooters. If you look at the, the lineup that Washington has, they have guys who can knock it down from outside. Absolutely. Porter, you got Beal. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Kelly Oubre is a little bit streaky, but you got the uh, dude Sadoransky. Sadoransky, the, yep. Them boys can knock it down. Morris can step out and be decent from time to time. I think the fact that you can play him and Howard kind of in some high-low action uh, will be beneficial so they're not always clogging up the paint. You're not going to be able to sag down very quickly on uh, these screen and rolls or these dives to the basket with uh, Dwight Howard. So I think that this should be able to work with Washington. One thing's for sure is... um, I mean, it, it looked the same way when, when, when he was in Charlotte, but he, he looks hungry. He looks ready. They have to find a way to keep him 
invigorated. Find a way to keep him up and interested in the offense. You can't just go to him for these looks for like these 10, 15 games and be like, oh, man, it's not working, and then shy away from what he got going on. If it's not working, you got to find a way to mix it up, find a way to, 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 to get something else working, try to find a way to say, okay, if this ain't working, let's try to incorporate you another way. But one thing I guarantee you, he's not going to do that crazy talk with Wall. <laughs> oh, hell no. I, so that's, that, so I, that's I don't one see thing that. I'm not worried about. I don't see that. So, so, so we got Washington. We went through They Miami. should make the playoffs. I think they should make the playoffs. Who, who, who you got? Let's just go with the seed. Who do you got? Uh, I think the number one seed, probably going to be Boston. I agree. Healthy Boston. Number two, I'm going to go Toronto. I'm going to go Toronto. Um, Kawhi Leonard is going to give you what he gives you, but with the the pieces that they have around them being healthy, I think they should be better than what they were last year. That's where we kind of differ. I don't see Toronto as number two. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised Ooh. if they get number two. Okay. I think Philly, Philly would two? be number two. I don't believe in Philly's role players right now. Mm-hmm. I think. So who, ben, who do Toronto has as role players? Oh, uh, Fred Van Vliet. Okay. You got, um, uh, what's my name? Uh, Norman Powell. Okay. Um,. The big dude, what's his name? The starter. Uh, man, why am I drawing a blank? Um, the big dude, Van Yeah, yeah, Valanciunas. Valanciunas. Yeah, Valanciunas. Yeah, there you go, right there. Um, I think they they have enough out there to be a number two seed. I think, I think their guard. I think their guard play really gets them over the hump. I think their teams are close. In order for Toronto to get number two, Kyle has to play. At least 70, not my only 70, 67 games. I think, I think Kyle Lowry games. can give you 67. 67 games. And in order for Philly not to get number two, their bitch guys, meaning Covington and um, Reddick. Reddick. And I, I'm pretty sure uh, Sark is pretty uh, consistent. But he has Covington, been. Reddick, they're going to need help. From them in order to stay up there, they're they're a top three team regardless to me. I, they should be, yeah. they should be a top three team. Um, I, that's who that that's who I would have at three would be mm-hmm. Philly. I don't think we see another step forward for um, Joel and B. I see. I, I th- agree. I, I agree. think I think we see another step forward for um, Ben Simmons. I'm excited to I, see Fultz. I'm really I excited. I think that's, that was going where I was going next. I think Markel Fultz is definitely going to be uh, – he has a lot to prove. He's playing with a chip on his shoulder already. He's yep. looked good in preseason I so agree. far. Um, so I think they will probably be a three seed, but I think I think we see – I'm not going to say a step back, but I kind of – I think we see the same game that we saw from Joel last year. Mm-hmm. If you really look at it, Joel did most of his damage in the front half of the season mm-hmm. and the front half of games. Joel Embiid is not conditioned for 82 games. So what if yet, jo- Joel... Or 48 minutes. What if Joel gives you... I don't even think he played 70 games last year. What if Joel gave you a good 72, 75 games? If his conditioning is better, then you should see his numbers go up. If, if you look at the numbers, they decline... In like the middle of the third and fourth quarter, Joel Embiid gets hit, tired. Hit the wall. Look, hit yeah, the wall. If, if you look at the playoffs, Joel Embiid got tired. Yeah. Um, and that's no knock on him. Uh, well, I mean, t- yes, it is. It's a knock on him, but it's mm-hmm. I, I I take that um, with a bit of a grain of salt. I don't want to see that again this year. The reason I take that with a grain of salt is because this is that was you can kind of say the first year where we got to see a full gambit of what Joel Embiid should be. You know, he got a chance to get, you know, his first really full season under his belt without being hurt for, you know, 40 games, 30 games. That's true. So I I think he he still had quite a bit of fatigue on him. I don't want to see that this year. But on the flip side of that, what has Joel Embiid added to his game from last year to make him better this year? I guess that's what we're going to end up seeing. What I can see him doing a lot more of, which a lot of the guys in the league are starting to do, is develop that three shot. I hope so. He didn't shoot it at a bad clip last year. He didn't. 
He didn't shoot it at a bad clip last year. And they need they need some perimeter shooting. Mm. If you look around that team, J.J. Redick is far and away their best shooter. But beyond that, who he else can stretch the floor? At all last year. He wasn't. He wasn't consistent at all. Who can stretch the floor beyond, besides J.J. Redick? Maybe Sarge? He's an okay mm-hmm. three-point shooter? Because Covington, they have him. He's streaky. He's, he's, spot streak. up he's yeah. very streaky he's up and down. Up. Yeah, they they don't. I, I think they missed adding a shooter in the offseason. Well, Crawford's still out there if they're looking. Man, I thought he would have been picked up, but yep. I guess not. So, number four. Four. That's probably where I would insert. Hmm. I was about to say Washington, but then I forgot about Milwaukee. No. I got Milwaukee. No. Yeah. Why not? I'm not sold. I'm, I'm sold. I'm, I'm sold on Bud as a coach. Okay. I'm still not sold on Giannis. Mm. And the reason, and I'm mm. every, every time I talk to anybody, they always look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Crazy. Giannis's game to me hasn't really developed. The numbers are great, but the game hasn't really developed. When I see Giannis, and I know it's a lot to put on this young man. I want to see KD. Maybe because it's the same kind of stature and size okay. and, and length. But even if he get if he gets a, a Rip Hamilton 18-footer, mm-hmm. it's too much to the basket for me to trust him in the playoffs when that lane clogs up. I want him to be able to develop a dirt post move and – you know, okay. can I kind of create more than just driving to the, to the basket. basket because you can't do that in the playoffs. Yeah, because they can collapse on you. Especially with the bigs that are in the East now. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. So with his skill set, he should have that from 20 feet in should be where he works with that size, his speed, his handles, which has gotten better. Mm-hmm. You know, he should be living within that 20 foot in. He doesn't really need to shoot the three because the team has enough shooters in. Um, Brogdon can shoot the ball pretty well. Middleton. Uh, Middleton can shoot the ball pretty well. They just got um, DiVincenzo. He can, he can stroke it. When Snell feels like it, he can shoot the ball pretty well. So if you know he, how I feel about Tony Snell, man. I do. But if, <laughs> but, but, but if he develops a mid-range shot mm-hmm. and kind of stop the win, he hasn't been hurt, but he's had nagging injuries throughout the yeah, years that that's true. he missed maybe five games, ten games. It's not anything that's, you know, detrimental. But kind of save his body from just being the dunk machine. Yeah. I don't want him to go down because he has so much potential to just be the dunk machine. I'm saying it now. Episode 8. I already went with MVP being mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving. So I'm mm-hmm. going to stick with that. A healthy Kyrie Irving. Giannis will be one of the most improved players in the NBA. Improved off what? That's what he's going to develop the jump shot. He's going to develop the IQ of being able to make his teammates around him better with his ability to make defenses collapse. I So just, so just, he's going to all but, of a sudden be able to pass cuz he can't pass. So he, here's the thing is with I I think his ability to ma- manipulate defenses will allow him to just be able to open up better passing lanes. I don't think he's going to all of a sudden have some Steve Nash IQ and be able to just make these out-of-world passes. But I think his... Do you think he has uh, a basketball IQ or he just have a physical yes. ability? No, he has the basketball IQ. Okay. And he's going to show it this year. Okay. He's going to show we, it this we, year. We, what's the episode this, eight? Epi- this episode Ep- 8. Episode Mark 8. my words. Y'all hear me. Uh, Mark my words. So, he's going... He's. So we gonna we gonna go we're gonna come back to this at our mid season review. Sure. We're absolutely. gonna come back to this. Yeah, a healthy Giannis will be a absolute force in the NBA this year. Mm. An absolute force. Okay. I'm still sticking with Kyrie as MVP. We'll see how that works out. But I wouldn't be surprised if Giannis is there or the one by the end of this well, season. Well he finished what last year, number four or five somewhere in there? Somewhere around in that. So he'll think, he'll he'll always be there because he's he has it. He has it. Yeah. Yeah. And he plays on a team where he has to dominate in order for them They're to win. They're going to definitely run the sets for him. Yeah. Because you gotta you, you lose Jabari Parker and 
that's I, I don't care how you slice it. That's twenty points that mm-hmm. you that that's coming away. And if you look at it, what did they get that says, "Oh, okay, well now I can get you twenty points back." They added Brooke Lopez. I don't think Brooke Lopez is gonna get you twenty a game. Nope. Uh, they added uh, the rookie Divincenzo. I'm really high on him. I like his game. Yeah, he ain't Good two way player, but he ain't getting you twenty buckets. I mean twenty points. Um, so I think that's where we're going to see a better Giannis. I, I think I think Giannis is definitely finna bring it this year. All right, I'm excited to see that. So because I'm so high on Giannis, I'm giving him the four seed. Okay. So I'm you got Washington five. I got Washington five. Who is six? Six through eight is an absolute toss up, but I'm going. Um, I'm going Indiana. Do six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight, real quick. I say ah, this is tough. I say Indiana, Miami. Uh, go, go, go ahead I, and say it. Just say it. I don't believe they're gonna do it though. Uh-huh. I would love to see the Bulls in the eighth seed. Okay, <laughs> but I don't. I, I don't think the pieces are there yet. Uh, I think they still got some chemistry and some meshing to do. Honestly, I think the Bulls' downfall is gonna be defense this season. But I just go ahead. Just the homer in me, the the, the biasness in me is is, mm-hmm. is is radiating right now. I'm gonna say Bulls at eight. My five, six, seven, eight varies. I okay. go some days. I have um, Milwaukee at five. But I can also see them at a six or a seven too. Mm-hmm. I'm very interested in what Detroit does. I'm not mad at Detroit. And what Detroit? I can easily see them within that seven and eight. I can too. The Bulls, if they get it together, I can easily see them not eight, but six seven because they're playing good right now. They're yeah, they're playing pretty real good right now. Their offense, the way it's set up on paper. I believe can score with a good majority of the league, or the other than the Golden States, of course. We should average over a hundred points yeah. with the team that we have out there. I believe. Maybe one, one, one hundred eight, one ten oh, in yeah. that range. Yeah, no, for sure. But we have the propensity to give up one twenty. <laughs> That's the, that's the problem. That's the problem. So it's gonna look like the seventies Denver Nuggets out there, man. Right? Yeah, pretty much. It's like man. so. So on, on the East, I, I agree with everything you're saying. The only thing that I interchange is uh, Washington and the Milwaukee four and five. That's it. Okay, I'm not mad at that. Um, teams that's on the outside looking in or right around there, I definitely say Detroit. That's the only one. I, Everybody else all the way outside. You think so? Brooklyn all the way outside. Atlanta, I see that. all the way outside. For sure. Orlando, all the way outside. That's I it. don't know. We'll see. We'll Atlanta, see. Atlanta, did I say Atlanta? Yeah, yeah, all you said yeah, definitely Atlanta, all the way outside. The Knicks, the Knicks all, all the way outside. outside. That's course. it? Yeah, no, nah, that ain't it. It's um, a nine team playoff. Charlotte. Charlotte, all the way outside. I like Bridges. But he's, I like Monk, all the way outside. Yeah. <laughs> All the way outside. All right, all right. So uh, I think that's all of the East teams. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nine teams competing for eight spots. Cleveland. Like Ooh. <laughs> I'm, Stop it, man. Cleveland ain't going to make the playoffs, dog. If the Bulls can get eight, Cleveland can get eight. They just lost LeBron, which is a huge loss. It is. But it kind of puts love back. Back into that. I don't the know. If it, I don't know if he's able to do this now with the injuries and being out of it for so long. But but if you if you get that, then you here's know we, the re- here's you know the, we got our best Jr. when he was like a one of the scores you have to depend on. But that's not the problem. It's mm-hmm. not going to be Jr. and Love will not be the problem. You're going to need somebody to facilitate to make uh, uh, Tristan Thompson be who Tristan Thompson was. A young boy. for I love Colin Sexton's game. I do. I always have. Ever since I watched him in the McDonald's All-Star game, I was like, this dude is going to be amazing. Yeah. He went to Alabama. I said the same thing. This dude going to be amazing. Played three on five, four on five, and he still dropped 40 on them dudes, almost mm-hmm. one. He is a score first guy. He still is. Not saying he doesn't have the ability to facilitate, but the current team that's around him, you need to be able to facilitate to have them be good. Larry Nance can't create his own baskets. Nope. Um, what's my man's name? Who I just named? Uh, Tristan Thompson can't create his own shots. Kevin Love can. 
Um, J.R. Smith can, but he's kind of erratic when he does it, mm -hmm. and Rodney Hood can't. That's it. Nobody else is a creator, so creator think, on that team. So do you think if they're close to making the playoffs, they make a move, like a like a move move? It depends on what they're willing to give up. They'll have to give up picks, and I don't think that they're willing to give up picks because they're, even though they're in a sort of a rebuilding stage, they have they're pieces. They're in limbo stage. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Limbo. Right, yeah. So, so that, that's a better way to put it, limbo, rather than rebuilding. I don't think they finish above 500. Mm. I don't I, think they finish I'm above 500 because I think they're going to come out and they're going to have a lost identity. Not you got to the think they had identity issues when they had LeBron. So without LeBron, they definitely going to have identity issues. I agree. So I, 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 I think. But with the talent that they have, you can't not. But if, you, if we're going to throw Bulls, Detroit, excuse me, we got to throw. I think Cavs, all of them are can be anywhere between 8 and 11. Not 7 and 11. Okay. I they, they're all right there, 7 and 11. I, I, I'm going to be honest. Still, I, I don't. I didn't want to put the Bulls in there, but I did because I'm biased. But I don't think the Bulls will make the playoffs. I think this is going to still be a huge step forward from where we were last year. All right, West. So, is, it, is it go to say the bus in the West? No. And here's the reason why I say it's not Golden State or bust. Golden State is going to be the number one team. Um, but the target grows larger. DeMarcus Cousins, I mean, is it had the wow factor. But after I sat back and I watched it, does DeMarcus Cousins find a way to tailor his game to fit into Golden State system. It's not going to be the other way around. It's not going to say, oh, well, we'll find a way to tailor our game to fit around DeMarcus Cousins. No, you don't do that with Golden State because they didn't do it for KD. I wouldn't be surprised. And people are going to say I'm playing all the way devil's advocate if he probably ends up getting moved. Mm, I don't think so because I don't think we're going to get a chance to see him until after the trade deadline anyway. DeMarcus right. Cousins is not going to play. He got the still, foots. Yeah, he got right. the foots. He got the foots. So, so I, I think he's going to end up He going to end up being there. But would you he's be surprised? Like, uh, you know, a lot of cats try to make it work when they go to don't. certain teams, but yeah. it's just not you. He's been the man for however many years he's been in the league, 10, mm -hmm. 12 years. He's been the man. Has it been that long? Seemed like it. No, if, LeBron, been if, that if, long. if LeBron been in the league for 16. Yeah, but DeMarcus Cousins ain't been. Marcus Cousins ain't been in it. He can't came, be dog. Yeah, he came out with um out of Kentucky when uh nope because he played with AD. Yeah, and AD been in the league for about what seven, six, something like that. So he about eight, eight, nine. I give him yeah somewhere six, six to eight, something like that. I don't think his yeah. makeup will allow him to be a pretty much. He's not even the fourth option. He's probably going to be the six seven you got you he has to tailor his game to fit to golden state and i think he could do it mm -hmm. i think he could do it because he tailored his game to fit with new orleans and it worked new orleans was doing they were solid mm -hmm. with, with him and ad he never played with another predominant big who could hold his own and in, in, in where they have to coexist in the same space at certain points in times a lot of that a lot of time they did high low because both of them but were so talented that's what i'm saying they kind of worked over in um new orleans because ad was more than capable of okay you go inside and i, I can go out. i can yeah. stay out here he had they he, the way that it works in golden state he has to buy into the system if he buys mm -hmm. into the system they can make it work but when it can make you buy into a lot of things exactly so. and that's the main thing he's looking for so who did you have at number one Golden State. Golden State. I agree. Two. Clear cut is Houston. I agree. It's, we may not even be talking about them being champions, being talking about Golden State, if we had a healthy Chris Paul. Because mm -hmm. they was on the road. Yeah. So they did lose a little bit of defensive firepower because they lost Trevor Ariza. Mm -hmm. But you got Carmelo Anthony. And a lot of people are like, oh, Carmelo is Carmelo. First of all, Carmelo had a terrible year last year, and I solely blame it on Billy Donovan mm -hmm. and his identity issues and his lack of uh, uh, of being able to uh, coach personnel. He mm -hmm. did a horrible job with coaching Carmelo Anthony. I stand by that. Carmelo mm -hmm. Anthony is still a premier scorer in the NBA. I don't care what nobody mm -hmm. say. I agree. I put some of the blame that happened in OKC on Westbrook and George, too. They froze I, him out a lot. I agree, but... 
at, at some point in time, the coach has got to say, there's like, man, I have somebody with this much talent, speaking just solely on Carmelo, because you know what you got in George, you know what you got in Russell uh, Westbrook. And that's that's Westbrook's team, no doubt about it. Mm. There's no way to try to finesse or change that. But when you have a guy as dynamic as Carmelo Anthony, mm. you cannot just stick him in a corner and expect him to just be a spot-up shooter. Mm. You can't. That, that that's not his game. What that's the a score shooter like that has to get lathered. You you got to, and he's too talented to just say, okay, we're gonna stick him here, and then in the next half, we just gonna run him to the other uh, opposite side of yeah. a corner or uh, to the opposite wing and just stand and stand there and leave no motion. No, that's that's not his game. So how many games into the season is he inserted as a starter? If he isn't the starter now. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if you need to hurry up and insert him in there. Melo tried to tailor his game around the Thunder. He didn't. He didn't bicker. He didn't uh, call. You know, rustle love, up no feathers that, or nothing. That, that gave him he, several he, he, notches to he was the ultimate professional in the way that they treated him over there in OKC, yeah. and it was terrible. I think he does the same thing here in Houston, whether he starts on the bench and then becomes the starter or if he's in the bench the whole time. I think he completely tries to buy into the system. But they run so much better offense there. Mm. You know, they used to be very ISO related. It's like ISO with Harden or ISO with um, uh, Chris Paul. But now, especially in the playoffs, they started to run so much more motion and being able to, uh, you know, run pin down screens and, and backdoor cuts. The, 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 the offense moved so much more fluent in the playoffs, in my opinion, especially once they got past them couple of hiccups that they had with um, Minnesota. You know what? So your your argument was so compelling. I'm about to change. While you was talking, I was doing scenarios in my head. There we I'm go. about to change. Mm-hmm. Golden State to number two and Houston to number one. I'm not mad at that. And, the, and I'm not mad at and that. And I'm just looking at when Harden goes on the bench. Mm-hmm. Melo is a six man. We know that. Yeah. When Harden goes to the bench, Melo assumes that role on the court with Chris Paul. That's crazy. You know? And if Melo can give you, I think he what, 13 last year, I want to say somewhere around that, mm-hmm. 13 a game? Something if, like that. If you can get a solid 17, between 17 and 20 for Melo coming off the bench, They'll be the number one seed. And my thing is you still can't – let's say you playing him out there with the second string. You still can't just collapse on him because you still got Eric Gordon. Eric you still Gordon. got Gerald Green. You still got P.J. Tucker. They have guys out there who can still get busy on the yep. court. Houston is going to be a problem. Houston was a problem last year, mm-hmm. and they took they took Golden State to seven with a, a, a lame Chris Paul, hurt Chris mm-hmm. Paul. So, if you, if you have Houston at one, I don't have any problem with you saying that. Who's that, three? Three, four, five. That's where it gets tough. I think... Mm, I still got Portland. Portland where? I got Portland at three. No. I got Portland at three. No. Here's, it, hear me out. No. Hear me out. I'm sorry, bro. I, I got Portland at three. I think... Dame still playing with a chip. C.J. McCullough. Um, I like the uh, Gary Trent Jr. addition. Mm-hmm. So it gives them uh, a guy who can uh, spark it off the bench. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I I think they have to. They definitely have to 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 change some things. But I like I like Portland. Dog. I say Portland top five. I got OKC number three. Oh, I forgot. How did I forget about OKC? Mm. I'm still going Portland. So I'm going. I'm going <laughs> top five. I'm going Houston, mm-hmm. Golden State. Of course, those are interchangeable. But I'm gonna stick with Houston, Golden State, mm-hmm. OKC, mm-hmm. number three, Utah, number four. I like Utah. Portland, number five. Okay. I'm still going Golden State, Houston. Still gonna go Portland, OKC four. Utah number five. Six, seven, eight. Six is going to surprise you. Denver. I was going to say Denver. Yeah? Yeah. My man. <laughs> I was going to say Denver. I'm going Denver. I think that may be one of the most fun backcourts yeah. to watch mm-hmm. in the NBA. I agree. If both of those dudes is healthy, 
Gary Harris mm-hmm. and um, Murray, mm-hmm. phenomenal. Um, you still got uh, Nokic up front. You got Paul Millsap. Paul, well, a full year of Paul Millsap. A full year of Paul Millsap. Denver is going to be in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I got him as high as six right now. Mm-hmm. New Orleans. New Orleans is still a playoff team. So New Orleans number seven. New Orleans is seven. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if New Orleans was six, but I'm going New Orleans seven. Mm-hmm. Um, they lost Rondo, uh, but they got Alfred Payton, which mm-hmm. is Rondo Jr. Jr. True. Even less of a IQ, mm-hmm. less of a jump shot. But the man can still pass. Mm-hmm. He can facilitate. AD is AD. And um, you still have... You still got Holiday. You, yeah, I was about to say, you still got Holiday, who had an amazing year last year. I think um, their role players are uh, definitely going to come along. Miritich played really well with them. He and now you're going to well. have a full year of Miritich. Yeah. So uh, I'm, going, I'm going to Orleans there. And to round it out, this is tough. I want to say the Clippers. And the reason I'm going Clippers over San Antonio is because two things. They just lost both of both of their point guards. Mm-hmm. They lost Lonnie Walker, who I was really high on. I think he's going to be a really good pro. And then they lost DeJounte Murray. So they lost both of their yeah, point that's guards. Big. That's, that's, that's going to hurt. But... With LaMarcus Aldridge, you still got Powell, you still got Rudy Gay, mm-hmm. and most of all, you got Popovich. Mm-hmm. I, you, you, shout out to Brad Stevens. I think he's amazing. I still think Popovich is the best coach in basketball. Still, mm-hmm. it's proven. The jewelry proves that. So, I'm, I'm, but I'm going because they lost their point guards. I'm going to give the edge to the Clippers. Rounding out uh, on the bay. Rounding out eight. Okay, so you said six was who? New Orleans. Six was. No, no, six was um, uh, Denver. Denver. Okay. Six is Denver. New Orleans is seven, and then we going. I'm going to Clippers at eight. All right, I'm going Spurs at seven, because I can't count them out until until they're out. We I thought that it. last year. Yeah. And they got close. Yeah, but they had a point guard. Yeah. Now I mean, they, you look at what they run so much. I would, it, you it's know, point no, guard. I, I would even be surprised. Him and Buford. If they go out they and, find a, and find a play guard, and, and bring Tony Parker back. <laughs> Hell no, nah, not Parker. But, but no, they, they'll, they, I, I think they'll find a way to in, install some type of point guard. But number, number eight, I got the Clippers. 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 I think um, a healthy Pat Bev mm-hmm. will will definitely show some things that they got a solid team. Four over year there, of um, Gallinari. Four year Gallinari. Tobias. Tobias Harris is still nice. You lost um, big man, a Mar- uh, uh, Harold. Yeah, yeah, Martrez Harold. But you lost, you lost DeAndre Jordan. But I think mm-hmm. this gives a chance to give Harold mm-hmm. uh, some uh, some better playing time. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Te- the 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 foreign cat, the foreign point guard over there. Oh, uh, Teo Desic. Te- yeah, Teo Desic. That dude can ball. He can ball. He, but he's he, also about to be thirty five or thirty six. True. <laughs> but um, you know, I I think he could, I think he can still make it happen. Uh, his his IQ is off the chain. He can definitely mm-hmm. pass. He's a solid shooter. I think he actually needs to look for his shot a little bit more okay. because he can he can pull that joint. But he's so into trying to facilitate. But um, I give them the eight. I give them the eight spot. Plus, they still got a good coach. I don't care what nobody say. Doctor okay. coach. So before we close out, we wind it down. Where do you see the Lakers fitting in the in the playoff picture? Do you so, don't see them at all? I. Because none of us, we, 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 we both didn't say. We, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Lakers was in the not just in the playoffs, but uh, they, they could they could end up being six, seven, eight. I'm not gonna leave in front. I forgot about the Lakers, and they had LeBron. So I would now change. <laughs> <laughs> I go leave in front. I forgot about that. Uh-huh. I'm gonna go. I'm I'm, I'm keeping. Um, Denver, Denver at number six. six. Yeah, I like that. Denver stays at six. Lakers, seven. If LeBron, this is going to be the first time in his career he's going to have to average 27, 28. I don't think he's done that in a long time. I agree. He's going to have to get 27, 28. And I know him and LeBron kind of play the same, got the same flow a little bit. In order for them to win, they cannot freeze or downplay what they have in Kuzma. Kuzma has to eat. Yeah. 
And every pundit that I hear from, Stephen A to, to Skip Bayless, Shannon, Max Kellerman, all the pundits, no one is mentioning Kuzma in this dynamic. It's mm-hmm. how Ball is going to react. And you know Ball's the big name. I get yeah, that. Yeah. But in, in Ingram, because he's supposed to be the next coming of KD. I like Ingram's game, if too. If Kuzma is not in this situation here, it's going to be a long year for them. I think it's some identity struggles in the beginning because you have Rondo, who's a facilitator. You have LeBron, who's a facilitator. You have Ball, who's a facilitator. And I think they are a bit lost in the beginning with who's going to dominate the facilitation of the basketball. Now, I very well might be wrong. I've learned to not count LeBron James out. So... I wouldn't be surprised if they make the playoffs. I still have them on the outside looking in. Right. I still got them on the outside looking in. That's I can, I can so. see that too, but I, with LeBron and knowing that it's L.A., and if they're close, I think he's just going push to push the gas pedal down and just, yo, we getting into the playoffs. He got the ability to do that, yeah. man. We've seen it too many years in a row. So I wouldn't be it, – it, I, could, I could definitely be sitting here and saying, man – Looking stupid, mm-hmm. you know, uh, at th- this time in April, yeah. <laughs> saying of like, uh-uh, and I'm the guy who had the Lakers on the outside of the playoffs. I, agree. I-, I-, I might be that guy looking crazy. So it is what it is. But I think they have some identity issues in the beginning of the season. I agree. And for those that um, didn't see the the prediction show that we did, we both had Kyrie at MVP. Yep, Kyrie at MVP. We both had Luca. Luka Doncic as and, uh, rookie, of the year. rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. You had um, Bud as coach of the year, didn't you? But oh, we didn't do coach of the year. We did do coach of the year. I think I think I said Bootenholzer. Yeah, though. you said Bootenholzer, and yeah. mine was to um, be the tournament. Um, but you said maybe uh, Fisdale. Fisdale. Maybe Fisdale. Fisdale as a sleeper. Yeah. We kind of sort of did most improved player. We did six um, six man. You said Wendell, but you couldn't think of nobody else. Yeah, so I mean, six it could man. be Carmelo. Yeah, I'm about to say, do you just give it to Carmelo? You could, you could give it to Carmelo. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Bobby been looking good. Yeah, even more so than what Wendell Carter Jr. is showing. So I don't know. You six know man is kind of tough. If LeBron gets the Lakers, just because we kind of know how the NBA work, if LeBron gets the Lakers to that fifth seed. Fifth, fourth seed, he's gonna be MVP. With that team around him, why not? Yeah, yeah. I, and, and, and I wouldn't be mad at it. Nah, because I, I'm sitting here saying that they can't make the playoffs at all. Yeah. <laughs> so that might be so it. So we'll man. see. We'll see, man. That's a wrap. Y'all let us know what y'all think about uh, what's y'all Eastern Conference looking like. What's your Western Conference looking like? Uh, you know, what's your predictions? Uh, so hit us up. Let us know what's going on, man. How y'all feeling? All right. All right. That's peace, a ball. peace.